everyone and welcome to Unleashing the World of Music and Poetry. My name is Tammy Bowers and I am so glad that you're joining us for tonight's show. So we have a special treat for you all. We have Danny Candia. He is the guitar player for the world-renowned alternative rock band Falling Through April. If you have not heard this band, you are in for a treat. They have toured internationally and throughout the U.S., uh, touring with such bands as Theory of a Dead Man, Pop Evil, and many, many more. So let's get us started with tonight's show. Here is Danny Candia, the guitar player for Falling Through April. Thank you for joining. I appreciate it. And and um, you just taking some time today and speaking with me about the band and what's going on in your world. Uh, you know, I was... Uh, like I was talking to you just a few minutes ago, I, I love the band, love the music. Um, you know, it's just a, a different, you've got just a different vibe, you know, than, uh, than what we normally hear on the radio. Um, you know, you really stand out. And so how did the band come together? I know you've been together for, for quite, quite some time. Yeah, we were originally um, uh, a, a band with a male vocalist. Oh. And... Um, so Jim and I, the other guitar player, him and I have been together in the band. Uh, we started playing together back in 2011. So um, after, you know, we went through a couple of years of playing with um, like male vocalists, we really just wanted to do something completely different. And our producer at the time, um, John King in Nashville, he suggested that we go the route of, you know, maybe trying to introduce a female vocalist and see, you know, how that worked for us. So um he actually is the one that discovered Michaela and and put us together um and uh yeah I mean it's the chemistry is really good and it's been I mean all just all uphill you know ever since then I mean it's been a, a really fun journey with Michaela she's very talented she's very you know fun to be around and um you know brings a whole different energy a whole different vibe it it was definitely the right move for the band right right well that's amazing so how how was it like I saw some some things on um, on the internet. How was how was it opening up for or touring with um, Theory of a Dead Man? I've got, I've got to ask because <laughs> they're one of my favorite bands. <laughs> oh yeah, we've done we've done a couple of uh, national and international tours, and um, without a doubt, hands down, we I mean we say it all the time. They were the nicest, most amazing people to go on the road with. Um, their entire crew, I mean, treated us with the, uh, just the most respect. Uh, they were really um, just, they, they looked out for us. You know, they took really good care of us on the road. And, uh, you know, most bands, especially of their caliber, they don't really do that for up and coming bands. And, um, you know, we developed a really good personal uh, relationship with them and their crew. We still stay in touch with them, uh, you know, even, even today. And um, I mean, I, I can't think of enough good things to say about them they're great people oh that's wonderful to hear so who is who is your favorite band to, to play with besides theory of the dead man <laughs> um i mean we've done some pretty cool like uh like bigger festivals and stuff we just did rock fest a couple of weeks ago and um you know i mean that we, we got to open the main stage for rock fest and that was just a completely surreal experience it's the biggest festival that I've ever played in my career. And, uh, you know, to be on the main stage was just, I mean, breathtaking. It was an amazing experience. Yes. It's kind of like you look out in the crowd and you're like, wow, this is, yeah, it is surreal. It's like, this is actually happening. You know, you want to paint yourself. I remember when I sang on the Grand Ole Opry, I was like, is this really happening? Am I really here? <laughs> so I can understand completely how that is. <laughs> so how would you describe your all's music? Um, you know, we've been we've been compared to a, a lot of different people. And uh, I think the one thing that's consistent is, is basically like what you said at the beginning uh, of the call is, you know, it's we we don't try to be like anyone. Um, we don't we're, we're not trying to, like, be the next. No doubt the next Paramore, the next theory of a dead man, like, you know, we're, we're not trying to go that route. We write music. Um, in in a lot of it crosses over a couple different genres. You know, we actually mm -hmm. have a like a um, like a hip hop collab that's coming out next month. Oh. And um, it's something that's completely different. We've never done it before, but we, we wanted to, and that's just what we do. You know, we get together and we write music based on how we're feeling in that moment. And uh, you know, we just, 
we just try to put out music that we feel really good about and that we're proud of. Doesn't matter what genre, doesn't matter, you know, what topic or, or whatever, it's all personal to us. And it's, it, it makes us feel good to be writing and performing and uh, releasing music that's, mm-hmm. you know, means something to us. And it's not just, we're trying to be, you know, the next big radio band. I would love that. I would love for us to get radio love and, and to be the next big radio band. Um, but I, I, I hope that we can do it, you know, kind of on, on our terms with the, the music that we write. Well, that's wonderful. You know, you guys have, have really made your mark though. I mean, I was reading a little bit about your bio and, and I noticed that one of the songs, uh, it said that it's played throughout all the Foot Locker stores. Is that right? And, and yeah, de- music, Desperate Measures. Yeah, yeah, Desperate measure, Measures. And isn't that one um, played throughout some of the, uh, the um, fitness, um, the, the, yeah, the, the workouts yeah the fit yeah yeah it's on it's 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 throughout uh, the um i'll get it out in just a minute i don't know what's wrong with me today <laughs> it's one there's a bunch of different <laughs> yeah a bunch of different health clubs picked it up that was actually it's really kind of crazy because that was the f- very first single that we did with michaela the uh-huh. very first one and um you know we released that and and it was such a different direction because like i said we had a male vocalist prior to michaela and um it, it was, it was with mixed reviews, you know, it was uh, a lot of our longtime supporters were confused and, mm-hmm. and didn't understand, you know, that we were changing and taking such a drastic direction, but um, otherwise it was uh, that was a very successful song for us. And um, yeah, a lot of people picked it up um, uh, universal studios, the Disney parks, they played it around the parks and stuff like when you wait in line and um, you know, I mean, we, we got a lot of love. Um, mm-hmm. We shot that music video at uh, where they do the, the, or I guess where they did, I don't think they do it anymore, but um, where they filmed the walking dead. Oh yeah. So that was a, uh, that was neat um, to be, you know, immersed in that environment. And it really gave us the vibe we were looking for that post apocalyptic vibe. Um, but yeah, that, that was a, that was a great song for us. It really kicked off and, and reassured us that we were making the right move, you know, with uh, bringing Michaela in. Right. And, and I mean, it, when I was reading it, it said over, there was like, it's been played at over 3,800 you know, health clubs and, and 1800 foot locker stores. I was like, wow, that's fantastic. You know, to get that, you know, just to get that recognition right off the bat. I mean, it just kind of yep. solidifies that you've gone in the right direction, you know, um, by making that move, by bringing her on. And she's got a spectacular voice. I mean, she's just, uh, she's in a world on, on, on all of her own. You know, I, I kind of listen to her and I'm thinking, I hear a little Evanescence, I hear a little Gwen Stefani, I hear a little bit of this, I hear a little bit of that. So, you know, she's got a lot of variety and she can bring a lot to the table. So, yeah. So, thank me, you very much. I agree with that. <laughs> you're welcome. So, let me ask you um, who did you listen to growing up? <laughs> Who's your favorite? Um, so, my influence is really like I started playing guitar um, because of, of Metallica, actually. Um, my older brother, he uh, he was a big Metallica fan. And, you know, I would just I would hear them just ripping through guitar riffs. And it was like, wow, like, that's really cool. I've never heard anybody do that before. You know, it's I would love to be able to play guitar like that, to be able to do that one day. So that was really kind of my first introduction of like really wanting to play an instrument. And um and uh, I, I grew up on a lot of different styles of music, but like some of my my all time kind of favorite influences are like, I mean, Weezer was a big one. Uh, Metallica was a big one. Um, Nine Inch Nails, Red Hot Chili Peppers, Stone Temple Pilots, uh, Rage Against the Machine was a big one. Soundgarden, mm-hmm. um, you know, a lot of that that kind of like Seattle grunge, like that was a big, yeah. big part of it for me, for sure. Right. That was in the 90s. That's when all of that kind of evolved back in the day and you know it's funny I was sitting I was actually just sitting there talking to my husband last night about about all the Seattle bands and we were um, talking about when they came out and you know just how they that year was just a fantastic year you know you had all these amazing bands come out and and um, you know you had Nirvana that popped in as well they started it I believe uh, and opened it up and then everybody else just followed suit and it just opened mm-hmm. up a whole different world for music it really did the Seattle bands did so that's fantastic I, lo- I love and I can hear you know in some and as you're saying this I, I'm sitting here thinking of some of the songs that you 
you know, you, you guys have done. And I, I can hear those influences and, and some of, some of your sounds, but you've got such, like I said before, such a, um, a different, um, you know, exclusive sound to you guys, which, which I can see why you're so popular. Um, so what are, what are you guys doing now? I know you're on tour. So what, what's coming up, uh, coming up next? Um, so yeah, we have a couple of tour dates that are coming up. We'll be on the road for a couple of weeks in, uh, in September again as well. And then, uh, we've got some studio time booked because we're, we're always writing, we're always recording. And we have a couple of things that we're going to release, um, that we've already done in the studio, but we, uh, you know, we have, we have more stuff. So we're headed back to Nashville in, uh, a couple of weeks, um, to try to knock out a couple more tracks and just kind of see what other magic we can make. Oh, awesome. So you just had, and I, I, I want to talk about the song Paralyzed. So it just came out last month. So mm -hmm. um, let's talk about that. How did that song come about? Because I really like the sound of that. I was listening to, I've listened to it several times, but um, it's, <laughs> that's just me. But uh, I'll, I'll play something on a loop, just loop it and go, that's so good. <laughs> but how did that song come about? <laughs> Um, so we were in the studio. We work with a, a new producer now. Um, he's not new, but he's new to us. Um, Kyle O'Dell, who um, he was over here in the Carolinas with us and now is in, he moved back to Nashville. So um, the, again, the chemistry with him is, is really, really good. I mean, it's, he, he just knows how to capture like exactly what we're going for. So mm -hmm. we'll, we'll come up with some ideas, some riffs, some, vocal melodies, even just like some lyrics, a bass line, you know, whatever, and just kind of uh, play around and, and, and he'll hear something and be like, that's the one, like, let's, let's work on that. Whatever that was, let's, you know, let's start, uh, let's start evolving that idea. So funny because uh, Paralyzed came about, um, I always wanted to use, there's a device called Ebo. Mm -hmm. And uh, if, if you're not familiar with that, it's a, it's a device that you actually, you can, you can use on your guitar and it's like using um, like the bow of like a, like a violin. Oh. And so you can, you can make your guitar kind of like, I'm going to use the word weep, like, a, like you could like a violin. Yeah. And I always wanted to use that. So I've like, I've had this Evo for like four years and I was like, man, I'm, I'm doing it. I'm going to have a song that has an Evo on it. So we're in the studio and we're kind of playing around with a couple of riffs or whatever. And I start playing, you know, with the, the Evo and Kyle was like, yeah, that's it. Like, let's work on that. And then after all of that, at the end of the song, um, uh, when we went back and we layered the vocals and some other things on it, the Ebo actually clashed with some of the other instruments. So the Ebo inspired the song, but still didn't make it on the, on the track. <laughs> well, maybe next time, maybe next song. <laughs> yep. Yep. No, but I'm, we're, we're really proud of that song. I'm really happy with the way it came out. And, um, I don't know if you know this, but um, we the, the first week of sales that it came out, it's the first time ever that we've charted on Billboard. And wow. that that's a major milestone. Like, that's huge for us. Yeah. Um, so really, really excited about that song. Well, that's wonderful. You know, congrats on all your success, you know, and I, and I appreciate you just taking a few minutes today and talking with me and, and the viewers, you know, they love you. Um, I've got a lot of good feedback. You know, you were recommended um, that I reach out to you guys. Um, by several viewers. Hey, why don't you have them on next? So thank you. Thank you so much for taking time this afternoon and spending it with me. I appreciate it. <laughs> That's awesome. Of course. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. You're welcome. And um, I look forward to hearing some new music by you guys soon. <laughs> yep. Much more coming. All righty. Thank you. Have a good day. I appreciate it.
thank you so much, Danny, for taking some time out of your world and spending it with us. It was so good to hear what's going on with the band. I look forward to hearing your new music and seeing you on tour as well. Everyone, please stay tuned each and every week. We have Music and Movie Day. We have tour dates. And, of course, we have interviews. Something for everyone. So please make sure that you are subscribed to the channel so you don't miss out. And, as always, I want everyone to smile, stay positive, stay true, and always, always be you. And stay safe. Good night, everyone. I'm